Hallelujah, hallelujah, God bless you, God bless you. Let me lower that. God bless you, good morning, good afternoon, it's afternoon here in the UK. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are viewing from. God bless you, God bless you. It is another time in his presence and I know the Lord is here. He's here, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Blessed be your name, my Father and my God. Hallelujah, yes, Father. We just want to take time out to worship him a bit, and then we can start. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, great For the great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, we worship you, Father, we want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world, head in the dark, I want to see dry bones, living again, singing a song, singing high. great I am. He is worthy. He is worthy. There is none beside him. He is the mighty and everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. He is the great I am that I am. The unchangeable God. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. I want to encourage you to share. Share and invite your friends. Share and invite your friends. Invite them. Invite them to come and be blessed. Because I know that the Lord has something something special, something part, uh, spectacular for us today. Hallelujah. We're just going to pray. God bless you. God bless you for joining. Please share and invite your friends. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We worship you. You alone are worthy to be praised and adored. You alone are worthy to be lifted, Father. Oh, hallelujah. The mountains shake before you. The demons, they run and flee. At the mention of the name Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no power in heaven on earth. Or any on earth. Who can stand before the power. And the presence of the great I am. Yes, you are, Lord Jesus. We bow before your throne. We glorify you, Father. We just give you thanks. We give you praise, oh God. Holy Spirit, we invite you to take over right now and speak to us. In the name of Jesus. That's whom you are, Lord. Be blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome you all again. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. God bless you. We want to look at what the Bible says, that you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the earth, of the world. You are the salt of the world, the light of the world. What does it mean? What does it mean to be the salt, the light of the world? What does it mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the honor, all the adoration in the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He alone is worthy. Father God, we thank you. The mountains, they shake. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the world, of the earth. Hallelujah. Now, when we're talking about salt, salt is a very, very valuable. Salt is very, very valuable. And it's something we have in our kitchens. 
there is no amount of food amount of ingredients you will put in your food without salt will it taste good use cow use beef use everything but if the salt is not there to add taste to your food it doesn't always taste nice until you've added that salt except if for a reason medical reason or whatever reason you don't take salt you just get used to it salt is valuable and used for two things the first thing that salt is used for is as a preservative as a preservative and two as a taste enhancer like if i have in my kitchen sometimes i love coconuts and when it's going off you know like in africa the way do we do it we roast it i put some salt and i roast it and it tastes so good the salt has changed the taste so salt is a taste enhancer so when you add salt to your food it changes automatic automatically it changes the taste of that food it tastes better it tastes yum yum more yum malicious hallelujah and so these are the two things it's used for preservatives and it's used as a taste enhancer it makes it taste better yeah and so today we as believers are supposed to be the preservatives of this world we are supposed to be the preserve we are supposed to be the preservatives of this world preserving it from evil character of ungodly men in our society whose unredeemed nature are corrupted by sin but the opposite is the case today we are supposed to be the salt of the world the salt of the earth what is your neighbor saying about you what are, what is the fragrance coming out of your life how are people describing you what are they saying about you what are your characteristics what value are you adding to people around you yeah we are in the bible we are the end time we are at the end time a whole lot of things are happening unfortunately it's not even people that are in the world now that are bringing shame and disgrace to the body of christ it is we that are in the church we that are playing church today we are just playing church so many dramas in the body of christ today you hate your brother for no reason oh god is blessing him or her you just hate him or her oh she or she is blessed with that wife or that husband why not you anger comes in jealousy comes in and before you know it you begin to keep malice why are you keeping malice why is it that you don't want to see that man you don't want to see that woman why is it you don't want to have you don't want to associate with this person you don't want to associate with that person what is the character that is coming out of you are you really a sort or a tongue in the body of christ are you a sort are you adding flavor to the life of people, to people around you, to your community, to your city, to your area? The world is big enough, it's large enough for everybody. It can contain all of us. It can take every single one of us. There's enough space for everybody. Today, even on Facebook, I see a whole lot of things, dramas upon drama, wrong doctrines. And today we are running after this, running after that. What are you taking into you? Today we have lazy Christians. We are so lazy to read our Bible. We are so lazy to pray. We are so ready to lazy to study the word of God. And so we've become victims of wrong doctrines. Victims. Anybody can come out today and say anything because you don't know the truth about the word of God. You are following. You are following. What is coming out of them? Actually, have you Googled up? Have you looked at the person that you are following? Or have you checked what they are saying to you? Have you, com have you compelled it with the word of God, with your Bible? But because you are too lazy, we are looking for the easy way out. We have the microwave Christians today. Too many Christians. So many Christians, so lazy, the word here, this is our manual, the manual for our life. The manual for our life is in this Bible. Let's go to Matthew 5 and see what the Bible says about this. Matthew 5 verse 13. 
he says you are the salt he says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled trampled by men if it the salt loses its power we can't use it to cook anymore it's no longer valuable it becomes useless it hurts me it pains my heart it breaks my heart to see people even on live video telling men of god that is actually deceiving them that oh i don't go to that church anymore because why a pastor comes up a supposed supposed pastor comes up and says this church this pastor is fake that pastor is fake this and then he begins to stream live videos of these pastors uh, pastors preaching in their in their churches you oh, i used to go to redeem now i don't go to redeem anymore Be why because the pastor says the uh, redeem is fake or the past the church is fake haven't why don't you go to the word of god yourself and read what the bible is saying and it burns my heart that you called even on live and you are telling the pastor oh thank you for letting us know uh, now i don't attend that church anymore what a shame what a shame and disgrace to the body of christ to the body of christ it pains my heart that this is what is going on today in the body of christ deception everywhere drama pastors are becoming dramatic they come on on facebook and begin to act film and act drama they should go to nollywood and act too it's not only to come on facebook facebook is too small for them to come and act and be pretending it is only god that knows who is truly serving him the end is going to tell who is who the end will tell who is truly a servant of god and today i don't get what is going on because if you know the word if you know the word if you are not the word if you know what the word is saying what the bible is saying you won't be deceived you won't be deceived i encourage you today to go into your bible i encourage you today to read the word of god i encourage you today to go see what the lord is saying to you and i i'm encouraging you I'm encouraging you, go and read your Bible. Bible says, God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. The way we can draw near to God is by studying His is by studying of the, of the word, is by prayer and is by fasting. When you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. When you go close to him, he will go close to you. And then you will not be carried away with every false doctrine. People have taken Facebook as their church. Now they, don't, they no longer go to physical church. When the apostles of old were preaching, when the Bible says they assembled together in one accord, the, was there anything like mobile phone? Was there anything like Facebook? Thank God it's good that we come online. We try to encourage one another. We try to exhort one another. It to us is to help us grow spiritually. But it's not for you now to stop going to church and sit in your house. And be uh, and be doing church and be playing church in your bedroom and be playing church online and be playing church online and today i see people online saying this is a church come and pay your tithe and your offering what a shame they are heaping curses on their head you attend a physical church why won't you pay tithe to your church i am i don't have a church of my own i'm not a pastor's wife i am just a person god is using i'm an evangelist by calling yes but then did, god did not say you should bring your your tithe and your offering to facebook and be paying tithe it's a shame that men of god women of god children of god can boldly stand before people and say pay your tithe pay your offering why would you pay tithe to or a, a pastor, or a, 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 a minister, a pastor, or a, 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 whoever, a preacher online, on Facebook. That is very wrong. Very, very wrong. You, you attend a physical church. Your tithe should be to your own church. The church that you, you attend physically. The, your tithe is what the church is using to, to run. Is the truth. Your tithe and offering is what is used in paying the rent. Your tithe and offering is what they have workers in church. Your tithe and offering is what is being used. In my church, I attend Victory Outreach and I am proud of my church. In my church, for example, we have a home. 
We have a home. We are into street evangelism. Serious one. We don't joke with that. We don't joke with souls. We have homes. We have men's home. We have women's home. This home, it, they, we have it for junkies, drug addicts. Drug addicts that people have neglected. Drug addicts that have been cast away. Drug addicts, even ex-prisoners, ex-convicts. People that have been to prison and back. Ex-prostitutes. Alcoholics. Oh, uh, yes, alcoholics. These people that God have chosen. Touch, we go on the street. We are not fighting for members. We go on the street. We do our evangelism in the streets. And these people, when they turn their lives to God and they repent, we, we bring them, if they are ready to turn alive, we bring them to that home. The men goes to the men's home and the women goes to the women's home. And we have another one. The third one is called recovery home. And do you know these people, they come, they come here, they stay in that home for one full year, free of charge. They are fed every day. They stay in that home for one whole year, free of charge. They don't pay rent. They don't pay for food. The church feeds them. The church feeds them. And in one year, their lives are turned around. And you will see physical testimony. Physical testimony because when they come to church the first time, you will see them a homeless person. You will see them prostitutes. You will see them a, a drunk. You will see them a junkie. When they come to church the first time, you see their life. And come in six months. You will see the transformation, the perfect work of God. They don't pay, they go there for free. And so then you will not come and tell me to come and be paying tight and offering to you online because I am watching your video online. What for? That is that is wrong. That is a in fact you are placing costs on yourself. If you are attending a physical church, your tight and offering goes to that church because that is what they use in running the church. My church does not tax me to come and contribute to help pay for those homes or to help in running the home or they don't stress the members they don't nothing we don't they don't do it the church looks after those people they look after them and sometimes i invite them over to my house because i love them you need to see the changes in them this is real testimony this is real miracles of what god can do of the power of god don't be misled don't be misled seed i know about seed you can sow seed to anybody that is your business. You can sow seed to any pastor anywhere in the world. You can sow seed, seed into your neighbor's life. With whatever your seed can be anything. It could be your time. It could be your money. It could be your clothes you don't use anymore. It could be to those charities. It could be anyhow. Seed is different. You can sow seed. You feel like God is telling you, is asking you to bless this person. You are free to do so. If you like, empty your account and bless that person. That is between you and God. If God is asking you to do that. But asking for tight and boldly saying on 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 uh, on Facebook that oh people pay tight to me and you are proud of it. These people have their church. Their tight should be to their church and not to you. Tight and offering goes to their church. If they want to source it to your ministry, they are free to do that. If they want to source it to your life, they are free to see do that. But why are we deceiving people? Why are we deceiving people? Are you yourself? That is supposed to be a child of God. Why are you being deceived? Why? It's only because you don't know the truth about the word of God. It's only because you don't know the word of God. If only. If only. If only you will study your Bible. If only you will read your Bible. If only you will draw closer to God. He will reveal those things to you. What is it that you are doing that you are not supposed to do? And you think, what is that secret thing you do? And you think nobody is seeing you. Oh, your pastor is not seeing you. Your church member is not seeing you. Your brethren is not seeing you. Nobody is seeing you. And you are busy doing it. <laughs> there is just someone seeing you. You are in church. You are not married. You are sleeping around, committing fornication. That is a sin. You are to be a sort in the body of Christ. You are to be a pillar in the body of Christ. You are to be a child of the Most High God. That is whom God has called you to be. We need to learn to change our ways. We need to learn. We need to live right. <laughs> God is watching you. 
God is watching us. He's watching you. He's watching me. He's taking record of everything that we do. You are there, choir master, music leader, worship leader, members. You are not married. You might be engaged, but you are not married. As long as you have not, you are not wedded. As long as you are not married, whatever you are doing outside of that is wrong, very wrong. It is wrong. Wait until you are married. Bible says that mar a marriage is honorable, but the bed undefiled. You are carrying your Bible. People knows you and look at your character. You might be the one that is tying your hair. Two, four, seven. Your hair is tied. You wear turtle neck. You wear long sleeve. You are wearing mazi skirts. But your heart is black. Your heart is bitter. Your heart is bitter. You have no love in your heart for people. You have no love in your life for people. You have no space in your life for people. You are not accommodating. Where then are you preaching? There was a time back home when I was still home in Nigeria. We have this co-tenant. In our house, in medical store road in Benin City. I'm, I'm an adult girl. I'm from Benin, if you don't know. I'm from Benin. I grew up in Benin. In my in the house, we it was is an upstairs. We live we were I was uh, renting renting one of the rooms upstairs, and there at this woman, she attended one of those church. She her hair is tied 24 hours, her hair is tied. She doesn't wear trousers, she doesn't wear I've not seen her with knee length skirt mazi and in the morning this woman is praying in that house the house is vibrating she is praying at the top of her voice we are all listening to her prayers we all hear her prayers but when you talk of wickedness she is number one she will come out insult her husband disgrace her husband this is not a story somebody told me this is what i witnessed myself and then you want to come and preach to us in the house thank god i was already saved then if not, because I knew my God as at that time. She had a daughter. This daughter, she had it for another man before her, her, that marriage. She causes this her daughter. Cause, use her own mouth. She will cause this child. Cause, this child begins to rebel against her. There is nothing good she will do. And this girl will never go with her to church. Her husband will never go with her to church. Your light, are you a sort? Is that the kind of life God expects us Christians to live? We are busy playing church. God is not looking for those that will play church or are already playing church. He says he's looking for that man that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Man, son, to Galagabash. He is looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. How will you preach to that person? And you, we Christians, our mouth, we use it wrongly. This same mouth we use to pray. This same mouth we use it to, to bless people. We will bring it again and begin to use it to curse and swear. It is wrong. It is wrong. The Bible says we should guard our mouths. You see, this our tongue is the smallest though, is the smallest part of our body, but yet the Bible says it is the most dangerous. You are a Christian, you are fighting on the streets. Somebody provoke you, you are fighting. It's good you always open your heart. I am the type of person, if you do what I don't like, I will not have a grudge against you. I will come to you straight and ask you, why did you do this? I don't like why are you saying this? I don't like what you said to me. I don't like this. The moment I say it to you, I forget about it. I move on. I see you tomorrow. I'm going to say hello because I've forgotten about it. And it's gone. But here, Christians are filled with unforgiveness. You are, you are a Christian. You are not a sort. You are a thorn. You are not a light. Ha. Because that is not the character of Christ. Somebody provoked you 10 years ago. You are still harboring unbelief. Unforgiveness, I mean. Somebody provoked you one year ago. You are still keeping malice. And then you are coming to church to pray. I'm sorry that your prayer is not cross silly. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. Because the Bible told me. My Bible told me that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto the Lord. Until you repent, your prayer is a waste. Let us stop all this parading, parading, acting, dramas in the body of Christ. You come to church, you pretend to be holy and righteous. 
you pretend so that your pastor will give you post and position, eh? So that they will think, yes, you begin to do eye service in the body of Christ. Eye service. You are here. Oh, eye service. Eye service here and there. <laughs> the Bible says the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Nobody knows it, but God does. God knows what is in your heart. That hidden thing in your heart, he knows it. I want to encourage you. You are here. You are a pastor. You are sleeping with your members. And then you are not afraid. You are standing on the pulpit, on the altar of God and you open. The day God will strike you. You will think it's an, en an enemy. It's not an enemy. Oh. God is only giving you time to repent. It's unfortunate. That is one weapon that the devil is using against the children of God. Especially the pastors, the ministers. Adultery. This pastor that is condemning other pastors on Facebook, he will be condemning other pastors. This pastor, I googled his name on, 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 on Google. What I saw shocked me. And there you are, stopping church because one person said this church is fake. Have you prayed about it? Has God revealed to you that that church is fake? It's not everything you hear you act upon. Not everything you hear you act upon. When you hear something from anybody called man of God, first go to God in prayer. Pray about it, Lord. Is this true? If you're a member of that church, like this man will bring clips of other pastors. Hey, this one, this pastor is fake. They are using uh, witchcraft. They are using this and that. And you too that is going to that church, you stop going to church. Hey, salvation is personal, my dear. Salvation is a personal matter. Pastor will stand for himself. Members will stand for themselves. You too, Papa, everybody will stand for themselves. You will use your own mouth to tell God how you lived your life on it. You are following the doctrine of man instead of the doctrine of Christ. Man says, did God say? I googled the name of this pastor. What I saw about him shocked me. I'm like, wow. And here you are condemning other people. We have to be careful. God is not interested in all this acting and dramas. On Facebook, in churches, he's not interested. He's, inter he's looking for a sincere, a sincere heart. A heart that will come to him with all honesty. To serve him in all righteousness. The God we serve is holy. He is a righteous God. And he's asking us to be holy. He's asking us to be righteous. Live right. Live right. You are in the church. He's, people are not afraid anymore. I saw a video. People are paying offering. You are not even afraid. You are stealing from the offering basket. Offering plate. In church. They give you basket to pay offering. Instead of putting your own offering. You are collecting from it. <laughs> and you are happy. God is watching you. <laughs> God is watching you. God loves us. He loves you. He loves us. It is not his will that any should perish, but that we should all come to repentance. Unmarried brothers in church, unmarried sisters in church, please stop living in fornication. You will come. You want to get married. You're already pregnant. And I, I, I'm sorry for you pastors too, that you are wedding a married couple in church in white wedding gown. They will still wear white too. You go wear white, come out with pregnancy. You will wear white wedding gown. You will come before the altar of God. You are wedding three people. Three people. That is wrong. It's very, very wrong. Error in these last days. Error in the body of Christ. You hate your brother. You hate your sister. Oh, why should he be the choir master? I'm supposed to be the choir master. Why should he be leading this group in church? I'm supposed to be the one leading it. I'm better. I can preach better. It's not about how, how good we are. God, is, God does not look. He's not looking for the perfect one. He's looking for the one that will be available. He's looking for that one that says, Lord, I'm ready for whatever you want to do. He's looking. That is the person that God is looking for. That is the person that God. He says, you are the salt of the earth. Our lives are supposed to be blessing people. Our lives are supposed to be adding flavor to the lives of people. But rather, our character is what is chasing people out of the church. Our characters, because of you, people refuse to come to church. Because of your character, people refuse to serve God. Because that one, you hear some people say, ah, if that person goes to church, I'm already there now. Sure. That one make church. Uh-uh. I am there. When they come for prayer meeting, you are there, oh. Money service, you are there for first service, second service, third service, all the services, you are there. But yet, your character is chasing people out of the body of Christ. 
we have to be careful. We need to be careful. Jesus loves you. Be yourself anytime, any day. Don't imitate anybody. The Bible says you be, we should be an imitator of Christ. An imitator of Christ. Not an imitator of man. Not an imitator of man, but of Christ. Please invite your friends. Share this video. Bless somebody. We are very good though. You can share bad news really quick. We can share other things very quick. You can add people to other groups, non-Christian groups. What stops you for adding people to Christian groups that they can be blessed, that their lives can turn around? What stops you for sharing videos that will build lives, that will change lives? We have to. We have to. Brethren, if you, if you stop church or you are not going to church, or you have made your city room a church and your church is online, you are wrong. You are, you are living in error. Let me ask you something. These pastors that are asking you to pay your tithe and offering online, to come and pay it to their church, pay it to their ministry, they're asking you, pay, and they are proudly collecting your tithe without even telling you that it is wrong, that your tithe and offering should be to your local church. Let me ask you. For example, when you are in problem, because whether we like it or not, God did not say because we are Christian, problems will not come, trials will come, difficult situations will come. Who do you run to first? Do you run to your pastor, online pastor? Or you run to your physical pastor? Or do you call on your brothers, your sisters in church to join you in prayer? Or you run, you run, you run, you, you, you run to your online pastor. See, online pastor may not be available the time you need them most. So better build contact, relationship with your physical, your earthly pastors, your earthly brothers and sisters, your co-pastors, your pastor's wives, your leaders in church, because they will be the one that will be by your, by your, uh, uh, on your side in time of adversity. Adversity will come. Don't think that it will not come. Being a Christian doesn't mean that you will not receive trials. Trials will come. The devil's mission is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He will come. It will come. It will come, but the only thing God promises is that when it comes, he is there with us. He gives us grace to go through it. But when you are going through that difficult time, when you are going through that difficult situation, is it your online pastor you are paying tithes to that you will run to? Is it not to your, uh, your church, the, your, your local pastors, your local church pastor that you run to, or your, the, the wife or the leaders that you will run to? Why are you allowing yourself to be deceived by these greedy pastors that are asking you to be doing this? And you, you need to know the truth. You are free to sow to their lives, but not tight and offering. It belongs to your local church. They won't be there when you need them. Your church will be there for you. Your church will stand by you. Truth, thick and thin. They that walk from the altar should eat from the altar. That is what the Bible says. Not they that, that walk online. They that walk from the altar feeds from the altar. Online, did you see any altar? I'm here sitting in my, in my, this is my bedroom chair. This chair is in my bedroom. I used to do this video sometimes downstairs in my kitchen or in my sitting room. But today I'm just, I'm having a personal program. I'm here in my sitting room, in my bedroom. I'm doing this video in my bedroom. And so I said to promote my video, for me to come online, you need to sow to my ministry. You want to, no, no, no. I'm not, sorry, I'm not against blessing anybody. You can bless any man or woman of God. You can bless anybody. You can, you can bless. That only God wants us to give. Giving is part of our life. is okay. But not your tithe and your offering. This my broadband I'm using is already paid for. Whether I use it or I don't use it, it's there. So it's not, it's, not, it's not mandatory. It's up to you if you want to bless any man of God. But never you give your tithe and your offering to anybody online. Give it to your local church, please. Bible says you should do good. Do good. Are you a, do you do good as the sort of the of the earth, the sort of the world, adding flavors to other people's life? Do you do good? People do. As people know that when they call on you, you will answer. Those people know that when they are in problems, if they call you one touch, you will be there. Eh? Bible says you should strengthen one another. We should do good. It doesn't matter because you know in this life, eh, this world is a very small place. This world is a small place. The people you help today will turn around to help you tomorrow. Be nice to people. Be good to people. Celebrate people. Rejoice with people. When they are rejoicing, the Bible says rejoice with them. When they are mourning, mourn with them. 
don't don't there are people that when something evil happens to somebody hey god don't catch them god don't ah, my god don't catch them why the animosity why that is not god's mind for god's mind for it so we should we should rejoice with them that are rejoicing we should mourn with them that are mourning we should celebrate people learn to celebrate people learn to celebrate people please do good do good even to them that hurt you ha. are you talking about hurt i've been hurt people that i have helped and then you know you help you know like most times you help people and these people that you help they will turn back and stab you in the back i have helped a lot of people that have stabbed me in the back i have helped a lot of people that have bad mounted me i have helped a lot of people that will they will just you know it happens get over it that is life that is life the people you help today are the one that would spread wrong uh, wrong uh, wrong speak wrong about you they will be the one that will stab you in the back but god says we should still love them love your enemies do good to them that hate you or persecute you do good to them that hate you or persecute you that is the word of god that is the word of god that is what God says we should do. Love them. Love them. Oh, you do good and they pay you back with evil. Oh, it's all well. Get over it. Pray about it. Give it to God and he will, he will, God will handle that for you. And continue with what God has placed in your heart to do. Be nice. Be good to people because the person you are hoping. You see, when the Bible says the stone that the builders rejected, Today has become the chief cornerstone. I am an example. I am an example of that of that Bible verse. People may reject you for whatever reasons. Your father may reject you. Your mother may reject you. Your step parents may reject you for whatever reason. But give it time. You will see. When God transforms and changes your life, <laughs> you don't even need to talk too much. The glory of God from you will emanate from you to them. See, before you married that man, before you married that woman, you know, you knew that he or she has a child or children before you married them. And when you are married, you begin to maltreat those children. You begin to treat them like animals. Be careful. You are sowing a seed. And then you begin to have your own children. You love your own children and you hate the other children because they are not your biological children. You begin to maltreat and mistreat them because they are not your biological children. You are sowing seed in your own. See, even if you do not receive that punishment, your children is coming. Your children is coming. People will treat your children in the future the way you are treating other people's children. I'm telling you. And you do you know something else? That child you are maltreating because you are not the biological father or the biological mother, but you are married to their father or to their mother, will grow up someday and he will be the, the pillar in that family. You never can tell. My stepfather, I'm an example of that, so I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying it because, because I want to say it. I'm telling you from, an, from my own personal experience. I'm a counselor. I've counseled people and I do counsel people. And I come, I come in contact with things like this. When I was young, I, my mother had me before, he married, before she married my stepfather. In the beginning, I did not even know. I grew up thinking and believing that that is my stepfather. Up until today my, today, my primary school certificate has his name as my surname. My, my, uh, taught before my, my, in the secondary school, like back in the days, we used to do like junior, junior living sets back in Nigeria. We do junior living set. My junior living set results still has his name, has, has his name till today, till now, because it's done. I've done the exam. It's there. I've done it. My primary school, uh, until, I got to know that he wasn't my he wasn't my biological father. I didn't know. My mother never told me. And nobody told me. You know, I was just walking. But the only thing I knew was that his mother hates me so much. I don't know why. She anytime I travel home then back then, you know, you go you go for holiday in the village and I'll go to her house. She hates me. One morning she drove me out of her house. 
but it was divine it was by divine hand as i was walking along the road going back to my other my 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 maternal uh, mom side somebody called me and said oh where are you going i said i'm coming from my grandma's place and she said who told you he's, she's your biological grandma oh we this is your family house um, and then they began to tell me this story that oh that man is your stepdad he's not your biological father if i'm lying go and tell your go and ask your mom i was in primary school i was in primary school but one thing i noticed was that my, that my mother never had peace i always talk of my mom oh. I, I always talk of my mom my mom she's my rock that woman it pains me today that she's gone it hurts me i don't like talking about it because anytime i get emotional when i talk about my mom I don't want to go emotional now, so I'm going to leave that for later. And that is how I got to know. But from the day I got to know he wasn't my father, that man became a thorn in my flesh. I went home and I asked my mom. I was told, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't tell you because and that happens. The man became a thorn in my flesh. He maltreated me. He would beat me up for every small thing. He treated me and my mother so bad. So, so bad. He hated me with passion when I was growing up when I became a Christian I was in secondary school year three when I became born again hmm. each time we have those fellowship in school it's called prayer link I attended Bini Technical College we have prayer link fellowship after school each time I go I come back home late that man will beat me each time I go to church and come back he will beat me the day I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit my own Christianity eh Ah, it's not like now you are you get yours on the platter of God. My own, I did not see it, get it on the platter of God. I suffered as a Christian, as a young Christian. The man would beat me up mercilessly. The day I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there, eh? if you see the cane I had with it, I was you know now coming from church, bubbling in the spirit, my sandori galegabo blasting in tongues, happy, joyful, go home. That man, I he laid me, he beat me like an animal. He called me beating up. My mother could not bear it anymore. My mother came and said, it's enough. He flogged my mother too. He beat me up like an animal. I can never forget that day. But I've forgiven him. Your forgiveness, you forgive. It doesn't mean that you forget the incident. It's just that when I talk about it, I don't feel anything. I don't feel pain. I don't feel hurt. That is how you know you have forgiven somebody. Because when you, are, when you think about somebody that hurts you, and you are feeling bad and angry, that means you have not forgiven that person. Search yourself. If you have truly forgiven the wounds, God will heal those wounds. God will heal your heart. He will heal your wound. He will heal your pains. God has healed my pains. God has healed. The man maltreated me. My stepdad, yes. I forgave him. The final one he did was in 1989. I'm saying this to you people that are maltreating your stepchildren. Your stepchildren, even if not your, even your stepchildren. You, in Africa, maybe you are one of your sister's child, one of your brother's child, one relative is living with you. You are maltreating that child. You have, you, you've turned that child into a slave. Be careful. Be careful. Because that child is a, that child has feelings too. You are hurting that child every, any time. That's I'm telling you the story. So that you'll be careful. Because you see, God has a plan for all of us. Even that child you are maltreating. You don't know. Today, I'm in, I'm in the UK. I live in UK. I'm in Manchester. I never dreamt. I never knew God would bring me to Manchester. I never knew. Nobody knew. I am not from a rich background. Yeah, we don't lack. My mother is a hardworking woman. She provides for us. I am not like the rich, rich, rich. I don't add. Who? I did not even know airports. Not to talk of coming abroad. It is all the Lord's doing. Because that child, my, my stepfather, when he was maltreating me, that never knew I would be in Europe. I would be in abroad. But God has a plan for your life. Be careful. That child you are maltreating, God has a plan for their life. In 1989, my mother sent me on errand to go collect money from somebody. I came home late. That man beat me, chased me, chased me, ran, around, around our area. I came back. He caught up with me. When I fell, he caught up with me. Midnight, night, oh, he beat me like an animal. If you look, I have, an, I have a mark here. I have a mark on my ties from that beating. I have a scar. I, he, he, you know when you beat an animal? That was what the man did to me. Beat me like an animal. For what reason? Why? I used to be ashamed. I used to be ashamed to say all these things. I, nobody knew things that the burden that I carry as a child. I carried this burden. Nobody knew. It almost ruined my life. Nobody knows. But then by God's grace. You know, his grace, his grace is sufficient for us. I am not ashamed to talk about my scars. Not anymore. 
because the Lord has set me free. The blood of Jesus has set me free. I am one. I'm just encouraging you, speaking to you. You men and women that are maltreating other people's children, be careful. Because whatever a man sows, he will reap. Not only that night did he beat me. After even beating me mercilessly, he sent me packing. At about 2 a.m. in the night, a younger teenager, a teenager sent me packing. Told me to leave his house. And there I was. That was what paid that I was so badly hot. I was badly hot. I packed. I carried my load on my head. Back home in Nigeria then, 1989. I went. I was living at Uselu. Back of Uselu Market. Because imagine if, if you live in Benin City. Back of Uselu Market. Back, back of that uh, Uselu Secondary School was where we were living. I had to come around 2 a.m. in the night. That place was filled with bush. It was bush everywhere. A younger, alone, all by myself. I walked all the way. I was just praying, Lord, protect me, protect me, guide me, keep me, protect me. Crying, weeping, saw everywhere. I was in pain. And I moved. I went to the barracks, army barracks in Uselu. To one of the family there. Then they were shocked to see a younger teenager of about 18 or 19. They're like, what? This time of the night? The wickedness. Wickedness of the heart. You know? That is what people... Be careful what you do to people. Be careful. Today now, look at the story has changed. The table has turned. That little girl he was maltreating that time is now a grown woman. And I'm the one now taking care of him. You see the irony of life? You see life? That is what I'm saying to you. Be careful what you do to other people's children. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people because tomorrow is pregnant. It will give birth to whatever you have sown today. Especially you that is supposed to be a Christian. The Bible says be the light. Be the light of the world. The sort of the word. You know, unforgiveness. I thought I had forgiven this man. I never knew. So, so you see how deeply I was hurt. I don't know who has hurt you. I don't know the pains in your heart. Forgive. I buried that incident in my heart and just moved on. And in my heart, in my head, I'm like, oh, I forgive him, I forgive him. But I don't like talking about him. For years, I did not speak to him. There was a day out of the blue, he called me years later. I was asking me for forgiveness. You know, I saw myself crying like a baby. I was crying like a child. And I was saying to him, oh, you hurt me. You hurt me. He, he was saying, my daughter, I'm sorry. My daughter, I am sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. That was when I knew that I have not really forgiven, forgiven him. I'm still a Christian. I'm a worker. I am a leader. But, and I'm grateful to God. Look, I don't have to pretend. I am, we should be transparent as children of God. Because the Bible says that no one is perfect, but we are walking towards perfection. Check your heart. Somebody has offended you. You don't like talking about it. You don't like talking about that person. You don't even want to remember. It's because you have not forgiven. I realized that later. And the wound was still there. The wound, the injury, the sore, the pain was still there. Each time I remember, I will begin to weep and cry. But not anymore. Because truly I have forgiven him. But then when I forgave, something happened to me. The Lord healed my heart. The Lord healed my wound. When I went home, I sent for him. Oh, yeah, I sent for him. Now I call him. He would not believe what I do for him now. Last time I gave him what? What for? Which phone did I give him? Samsung Galaxy S4. He did not believe it. I gave him, I first gave him another one, uh, what is Blackberry. Another, he said, oh, this bad. I gave him that one and many other things. He can, now he will call me and he will begin to pray for me. But it, take, it takes the grace of, it took the grace of God for me to forgive. Especially what he did to my mom and what he did to me and what my brothers. He never trained any of his children. Are you two parents? You have children somewhere. You, you abandon your children. You left them for their mother to train. You left them for their mother to train. That man should have been living in palace today. But we are doing our best. He did not train any of his children. No. It is only my mother single-handedly trained seven of us. Seven. We are seven. My mother has seven children. She was a single parent from 1989 till she died five years ago. 
She trained all seven of us. Today, my brothers, where you will say, you will say, look, I want to encourage you, single mothers, don't give up in, on life. Keep doing it. The Lord will give you grace to raise your children. Just surrender your life to Christ. He will help you. God helped my mother. She raised seven children all by herself. You know, all of them, my brothers, they are car owners. My brothers, they are landlords. They're raised by a woman, single-handedly. I don't know what your story is, but I know that there is a God that is above everything. Today, that stone that this man has rejected has become the chief cornerstone. My mother has died. My mother, my, my mother left us now. Now I'm the senior. I'm the oldest of them. I am now. I am now the mother of the house. Even to him that maltreated me so that treated me so badly. I don't know who has treated you so bad in the past. I don't know who is treating you bad now. But I know that you serve, we serve a mighty God. I know that we serve an able God. He will never forsake us. Yes, your father, we say, you see, God himself said it, that he will never, even though can a mother forsake a suckling child? Even yes, a mother can forsake as in when the mother died. Some people will die at childbirth and the children survive. That child, that mother has forsaken the child, not intentionally. But circumstances has caused that to happen. But yet, God says, I will never abandon you. I will never forsake you. Don't worry what men are doing to you. Do not pay back evil for evil. Somebody maltreated you. Somebody did evil to you. And then you are beginning to do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. No. No. Do not pay back evil with evil. It doesn't mean that because you did this something good to this person and they pay you back with evil, you will stop doing good. Please don't. Bible says you should lay, you are laying, see most of the things we do in life, you spend a time to visit somebody that is in need, you are sowing a seed. You take time out to pray for somebody, you are sowing a seed. You are building for yourself treasure in heaven. You have this thing, you don't need anymore, you know somebody needs it. You package it very nice and neat. You give. Oh, you went shopping and the Lord says, buy these things. Bless this sister with this. Bless this brother. You've noticed. Even in your church, you've noticed that this person is wearing this particular thing. This person is like, you notice that, oh, all is not well. And God is leading you to bless that person. And you do so. You do it. And at the end of everything, they pay you back. See, I, there are times in my house, I have three families. Husband, wife, and children living in my house. Three different families. We sleep anywhere you see, you sleep. They don't pay a dime for food. I will cook big pot. We'll feed the whole family, me and my husband. My children will, will inconvenience my children. Christmas time especially, because then they have no documents. They were in the hostel. I was in Ireland. When I was in Ireland, my door was open. Anybody coming in, they come to my house. You stay for as long as you can. I don't drive. Yet, some of these people paid me back with evil. Some of them did pay me back with evil. But will I say, oh, because somebody paid me back, that is who my God has called me. Uh, God has given me. I'm a very compassionate person by nature. I am a very quiet person by nature. I'm compassionate by nature. I, am, I like to be there for people by nature. And coupled with the spirit of God in me, I cannot see anybody in need and turn my back. My door was open. They come in, they eat, they do, they live with me. Christmas time, I cannot give my children gifts and don't give their children gifts. No matter how small, even if it's just one euro gift, even if it is a penny gift, it is something. It doesn't matter the amount that you are giving out. All you know that you are doing it for the kingdom. When you are doing anything for anybody, don't do it and be waiting for it. Say, don't bless people that you know will give you back. Bless people that you know that, yeah, bless them if God is leading you to. But bless people that you know cannot even give you, give, you, give you back. You are sowing the seed. You are building treasures for yourself in heaven. You are. You are. Those of you that you, you impregnate one woman when you were a teenager and then you abandon the child. Or you even don't now, you are an adult. You still abandon the child. It's bad. Go take care of your children. They may not be living with you, but take care of them. Take care of them because you don't know where God is going to lead them tomorrow. Don't forget, oh, you very soon, you see this, but each day we are getting older. A time will come that you can no longer provide for yourself. A time will come that you can no longer look after yourself. A time will come that you, even you did not make provision for yourself. And these are the children. Now they are adults. They are working and God will bless them. And they are living well and good. You will be too afraid to even mention them or even ask. But when you treat them good and well now, when you are old, they will be the one to take care of you. They will be the one to look after you. That is the truth. 
They will be the one to cater for you. Please, amend your ways. Amend your ways. See what, see what, um, let's continue reading. Verse, we are reading Matthew 5. Now verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, in the same way, let your light shine before men. Why? It said before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven. Not because of you. Don't let your light shine because of you. You want to do so that they will say, oh, this brother is very good. Do you know? Oh, she's so good. Oh, yeah, she's this. She's... No, 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 no. Do it for the kingdom. He said, do it. He said, so that they may see your good deeds and glorify and praise your father in heaven. Not you. Not praising you. But to praise your father in heaven. To praise your father in heaven by your own good works. Your character has made people stumbling block today. Your light is not shining. Your light is not shining. Say, let your light shine. Let your character, your character, let it shine. Let what, what are they? What are people around you? What are they saying about you? Oh, it's true that people will speak negatively about you, yeah. But at the same time, the Bible says we should not overturn um evil. You not pay back evil with evil, but overturn evil with good. It doesn't matter. I imagine a Christian fighting on the street. My goodness. Somebody provoke you. I watched one program like that, like that, where the woman, you know, after they went to preach evangelism himself. They were going to preach. This woman took a bike. She entered a bike. It was like these short films. And the, she entered the bike and then they, they agreed on the prize. And the bike man dropped her, asked for her money, for his pay. And this woman divided the money into two and gave the bike. And the bike man was like saying, but this is not our agreement. This is not the amount we agreed to pay. Why are you giving me this? Yeah. And she went there. Oh, you have to take it. If you don't take it, you are your own. Yeah. I was like, what? But then I did not know that this that is where she was going. But she had, and the bike man went away like angry. You know, the bike man was not angry. She was there. She was, the bike man was frustrated. And the woman just walked away like that, started evangelism. And then the bike, the bike man was on the corner. The one brother was ministry, was preaching to him. You know, it's an evangelism. And then while the, the, the person was preaching to, the brother was preaching to the bike man, the same bike man was preaching to him. And this bike man was going to, I was ready to accept Christ into his life and then the man just shouted oh sister i forgot the name please come and pray and the sister that was called upon was the same sister that has rained abuses on this bike man back, uh, bike man the bike uh, the bike driver can you imagine that and the bike man was like who that sister to pray that, that lady to pray for me the lady that just insulted me for my own money to come and pray for me Ha! Instead of that, I'd rather not go. And the man just left in anger and was crossing the road. As he was crossing the road, he got knocked down and he died on the spot. Tell me. That, oh my God. She, he was about to give his life to Christ. But the character of a Christian has cost him his life. Has cost him his salvation. God does not rejoice over the death of any sinner. No. But because of the character of that woman that was supposed to be a child of God, that is actually even going out for evangelism. I was insulting this uh, third, uh, the uh, bike driver for his own money. Insulted him. And now it is the same you that is being called upon to come and pray for him. You are coming on it for evangelism. And look at the seed you've already sown. But assuming reverse was the case, as she came... came Came down from the, the bike, assuming she came down from the bike, and then she says, Oh, how much is the money? Oh, um, 200 naira. 
because this is in Nigeria. 200 naira, say, oh, and then you give the person maybe uh, 300 naira, you do, he doesn't have a choice. Say, oh, don't worry, you keep it. And while you are going, you turn and say, take this, you give, oh, Jesus loves you, he cares about you, God bless you. That is enough, and go back. And when this guy was being preached for assuming that he was there, somebody else was ministering to him almost immediately. And then when the, then let's assume, and then the brother wants to give his life to God, and then they called you, hey, sister, this, 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 come. This brother wants to give his life to God, and you come. Oh, what do you think will happen? In all honesty, tell me, what do you think will happen? The brother will be happy to surrender his life to Christ. Immediately. Ah, this sister, oh, she will, he will testify. He will testify, oh, sister, you gave me even extra money. You even prayed. You said, God bless me. Ah, oh, please pray for me. I want to surrender. Why? Because you have shown him the love of God. Because you have portrayed the character of Christ. But look at what that small thing, it's not very small, has a soul was lost to heaven. Heaven weeps. Heaven weeps over one soul that is lost. Why? Because you and I, we are very, very important to God. He loves you. He cares about you. But what are your character saying about you? What are your conduct saying about you? All you do is to sit in your house, a child, born again child of God. You watch home videos from one home video to the home video, the next home video to the other home video. You do not have time to pray. You have made, you have, you have gods. You have made your TV, your God. You have made your uh, social media, your God. Thank God for social media. It is connecting us. Through social media, I have made friends. Through social media, I have made friends with people. I have connected with people. Through social media, I have with women of God, men of God, I have connected. Through social media, and I'm grateful for that. But what are you doing with your own social media? You can be on Facebook from morning till night. Your Facebook has become your idol. Please share this video. Ha. Facebook is like a marketplace. Facebook, yeah, is like a marketplace. What happens in the market? <laughs> Some people go to the market to sell in it. Some people go to the market to buy. Some people go to the market to steal. Some people go to the market to do window shopping. There are days I just want to go, maybe just go on the street in the shopping center, just do window shopping now. Just look at the nice, nice things in the stores and then you, enter, you come back home. Some people go to the market a while away their time. They have no direction. They just go there anyways. Or oh, some people just go to see what is going on. That is just like Facebook. That is how Facebook is. Some people are here to sell. Some people are here to sell different products. Some people are here on Facebook to do the work of the ministry. Praise God. Some people are here on Facebook to post pornography. I block such people immediately. You cannot corrupt my mind. If you send me, some people have tried that. They sent pornographic uh, pictures or videos to my box. In, uh, sorry, I can't pray for you. I, I, I don't block them on Facebook, but I block them on Messenger. You can't message me. I just block you right straight away. I will not delete you because I want God to touch your life. I want you to repent. I want you to surrender. I will not block you. I will not block you, but I will block you on, on Messenger so you can't message me anymore. But you'll be listening to all the things I will post about God so that you will repent. Some people are here on Facebook for, to do pornography. Some people on Facebook, they are looking for boyfriend and girlfriend. Some people on Facebook, they are deceiving people with their preaching. Some people are on Facebook to sell products. Some people are face, on Facebook to while away their time. What do you, you, has Facebook become your idol? There is time for everything. The time you are supposed to pray, it is time, that time the devil will not want, what, have you not noticed? Maybe you want to do your devotion. It has happened to me. I'm not going to even pretend. That is when I took my decision. I said, eh? When it's time to prayer, Facebook should have, they have to go and relax. When it's time for anything, relax. When I finish what I'm doing, I can come back to you. Haven't you noticed? Distraction. Facebook is distracting Christians. Facebook, devil is using, the, using Facebook to even distract believers. Social, uh, Facebook, Messenger. The time you want to pray, you hear one message. Oh, let me, you carry your phone and then you are looking. You want to see who's saying, before you know it, you are chatting. And before you know it, 30 minutes of your time is gone. I'm like, what? No way. And it will always come when you want to do God's own. It is only come when you want to pray, when you want to do something for God. 
And then Facebook comes to your idol. You cannot do without Facebook. Every second you're on Facebook. Every minute you're on Facebook. Every second you're on social media. You're on WhatsApp. All right, you are chatting. What are you chatting? You are not even preaching God. You are not even uh, sharing the messages of God. What are you doing on Facebook? What are you doing with social media? Social media is breaking homes. My marriage is today. The time you will use for your to spend quality time with your husband or your wife. You are there. Typing. Social media. Your husband will complain. Then you stop giving your husband attention. And then by the time your husband starts seeking attention elsewhere, you begin to cry, the devil. The devil. Which devil? Which devil? Most of us, we are the architect of our own misfortune. Be careful. Be careful. When the Bible says we should be wise as a serpent and yet harmless as a dove. The Bible knows what it's talking about, Lord. It knows. It knows. Please let us be careful, oh. Let us be wise, oh. Don't be carried away, oh. <laughs> that is why you need to know the word of God for yourself. You need to know the word of God for yourself. You need to know the word of God for yourself. You need to study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto anybody. Not unto man, but unto God. Not unto man, but unto God. Not unto man, but unto God. I don't know what it is as a Christian that you are doing wrong. You know it. Only you know it. In secret, what are those secret sin? Those secret sin that is controlling your life. You do them, you masturbate. A Christian, a supposed Christian. Christian, you are masturbating. A supposed Christian, you are chasing women here and there. You are chasing men here and there. A supposed Christian lies in your mouth everywhere. Lie, 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 lie. A supposed Christian, there is no honesty in you. A supposed Christian, you are supposed to be a Christian, a born again child of God. But what comes out of you? The Bible says, it is not what goes into a man that defiles a man. But what comes out? What is coming out of you? What are the messages you are spreading? What do you do in secret? What do you do? What that time you think, oh, nobody knows, nobody sees. Ha! <laughs> there is a big recorder in heaven watching you. Heaven is recording everything we do. Bible says, be a light. Be a light. Ha! When light shines in darkness, darkness flees. That is whom we should be on this earth. Be a light. Be a blessing. You are there. You're, you know somebody. You know widows around you. You cannot even bless them. You know the poor around you. You, cannot do no, you can do nothing for them. You see people in need around you. You pretend like you didn't see them. Why? Because you don't want to. You don't want to. And then you come out. You are blessed. You, you, you are rich. You are blessed. You have money for this. You have money for that. <laughs> Richness for me, that is not rich. You are rich when you are able to share what God has given you with others that are in need. I'm not talking about those that will pretend to be in need. Those that you are sure that are in need. Widows. Especially widows. God is the husband of the widows. Single moms. I have a passion for women. I have a passion for widows. I have a passion for orphans. Because I knew growing up without a father, look, you are blessed. You are lucky. Even most of you, your parents are alive. You don't take care of them. Shame on you. Ha. When you are not able to take care of your agent, you are living under a curse. Your mother that has carried you for nine months, that, has, that gave birth to you, that has suckled you, trained you, now you have grown. One pastor come and tell you that your mother is a witch and she wants to kill you. Why did she not kill you when you were a baby? One person come and tell you, your pastor, your mother, one, one so-called fake pastors will come and tell you uh, because they want to cause an enmity between you and them so they can deceive you for that more. You'll be giving them your money. The money will you, you will use in taking care of your parents. You'll be sending, giving it to one, 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 one fake pastor somewhere. Be wise. Look. <laughs> to some of you today, your mothers are still alive. You cannot even call your mother. You cannot call your... You don't know the value of them, of your mother. Until they will die. And then you will come. You want to come and do burial. Your mother that you did not feed. 
You want to come and bury her. If I'm such a mother, I will place curse on you. Don't come. When your mother is alive, you cannot take care of your mother while she's alive. A woman that has not children, a woman that has suffered, slaved. Today I don't have a mother and it hurts me so bad. It breaks my heart that my mom is not here because she suffered for us. She labored for us. This is the time she, we did our best. We built her a house. We took care of her, yes. But I still feel we did not do enough. I still feel we did not do enough. Thank God for those people that are taking good care of their parents. Heaven is going to bless you. Because when you grow old yourself, your own children will take care of you. You don't take care of your parents. You don't take care of your father. You don't take ordinary phone call. You have stayed for 10 years abroad. You have not called your mother. You have not called your father. You have stayed years wherever you are. You are even in the same country, sitting with them. You don't visit your mother. Oh my God. You are placing costs on your own self. God is not happy with you. <laughs> You, you have a father. Me, I don't have a father figure in my life. Oh. You see, in this life that since I was born, until today that I'm talking to you, no father has said I love you to me. No father has said, physically said, oh, I love you. I love you. And I know how important it is to be loved by your parents. Growing up as a child, no father. My stepfather never told me one day I love you. The only person that has said I love you to me is my mom. Before she passed away. Is my mom. I don't joke with her. It pains me. I, I don't joke with her. And that is why the legacy she left behind. Uh, my younger ones. My brothers. They know. Maybe when next I go home. I'm going to bring them live. So that they will speak to you people. I don't joke with them. And they know it. You don't, don't play with my brothers and my sisters. You won't even know that we are not the same father. But we are the same mother. And that one woman single handedly bonded us together. And brought us all together. Even their own is worse. They are... Uh, their own they miss my mom like crazy we all miss her like crazy your mother that has suffered for you you have no respect for your mother you are even ashamed to use your mother's picture for profile you cannot you're going to be looking for strangers outside you'll be looking for other people's picture outside and you'll be using that for your own profile picture you are ashamed to use your mother your parents picture because why they are not handsome why they are not gorgeous why they are not beautiful why they are not this they are not that they are too lean they are too tiny they are too skinny they are too fat they are too this flimsy excuses my dear love goes beyond that if you love your parents it doesn't matter how they look if you take good care of your mother your parents will look nice there is no ugly person in this life i don't believe there is anyone that is ugly take care of them clothe them buy them nice clothes buy them nice nice perfume clean them up make them make make nice hair for them Get them good clothes and see if they will not be transformed. Rub powder on their face. Carry your mother, bring a bring a hair, bring a makeup artist to make up your mother up with nice clothes and everything. And see if your nice jewelries and see if your mother will not will not look beautiful. I'm sorry for those that say they don't rub powder. Me, I rub my powder. You see me, I make sure you see. I do makeup. Oh. Moderation is the key. Look at me. I am not one of them. Yeah, if God is convincing you, convincing you, if you, your God convinces you that uh, makeup is a sin, you don't do it. Oh, that is your own personal conviction, though. It's good, but still, you can make your, you can beautify your mother without makeup. Buy her nice clothes, clothe her, let her bathe, rub, cream herself. Huh? You are ashamed of a woman that brought brought you to life. You are ashamed of a man that brought you to life. Me to the Father's Day, I'm always emotional. Mother's Day now, I'm emotional. Because I miss my, I miss not having a father, in my, father figure in my life. God is the only father that I knew all my life. You don't know the value of what you have until you lose it. Some of us are praying for what you have. Some of us are praying for what you have that we never got. I never got a father's, no father, no, I never had a father's love all my life up until tomorrow. But I have my God that is my father. Even today, let me tell you, I don't know where my biological father is. I don't even know if he's alive or dead. It's not that I don't want to know. He left me when I was in, in secondary school. When I got to know that he's my that this is the, uh, my stepfather wasn't my biological father, I went looking for my father. I found I saw him. That was the only year I saw him. What happened? He came to me in school. Then I was still in Bini Technical College in Bini. He came. I never knew he was traveling abroad. He didn't tell me, but he came. He was looking at me for. But I was wondering why he was staring at me like that. And as at that time, I was his only child. He wasn't, he did not remarry. He, he wasn't married. He was living alone. I was his only child. 
and through him i was able to connect with my aunties i have my cousins i know them now my father's side but he came once he just came then because i was still living with my mom he came to see me in school that very faithful day. i never forget that day and then later my uncle his brother told me oh my father has went abroad he was in um which country Belgium. was it Belgium? i can't remember the country now and this my uncle sat on his on the information he refused to give me my father's contact. He refused to give me my father's address. And do you know what? He died again. That my uncle is late now. Because he works in the Nepal office. He was on duty. He died on duty um, one year later or just shortly afterwards. So he died with that information. So now I've lost contact with my biological father. I don't know where he is. I don't know whether he's alive. I don't know whether he's dead. I don't know nothing. He's never visited home since he traveled abroad. And here you are. You have a father. You have a father that you can see face to face. You have a father that you can call. And yet you don't. You don't know the value of what you have. You don't know. You don't know. But I thank God. I am not ashamed. I'm saying it. I'm not ashamed of my scars. My wounds are healed. The Lord has taken good care of me. My God has taken good care of me. Because he never disappoints his own. He never fails his own. I don't know what you are passing through in your own life. I don't know the trials you are going through. Look, I've been through a lot in my life. If I begin to give you my stories, if I begin to tell you the things that I've been through, but look at me today. God's faithfulness is written all over me. By strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. You need to change. You need to repent. You need to surrender your lives to you. Look at what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah 1.4.5 it, it says that before he said, Bef before, he says, before he formed you, he knows you. He knows your name. While you were yet water and blood in your mother's womb, he knew you. And he has set you apart. God knows you. He knows you. He knows you. Even while you were still in your mother's womb. It was not an accident that you, you were born into that family. He designed it so. It is for a purpose. The whatever family you believe for, you, 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 you came into, it is not by accident. What did he say again in Jeremiah 29, 11? He says, I know the plan that I have towards you. We're just going to see that and then we'll, we'll just pray and go. I don't even know how long I've been on now. I can't say it. See, Jeremiah 29. So you, need, you are very special, you know. You are very special. You are valuable to God. He loves you. He cares about you. He has a very good plan for you. He says, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. This is God's plans for you, to give you a hope, to give you a good, good future. God has a good plan for you. Also, the devil has an evil plans for you. As God, it is your choice to choose whose plans you want to flow with. Many have chosen to flow with the plans of the devil. That is why today they've become arm robbers. Arm robbery is not God's plan for your life. Being a 419, uh, a scammer, is not God's plan for your life. Being an idolater is not God's plan for your life. Living in, 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 in uh, immorality is not God's plan for your life. Using pen and paper to steal is not God's plan for your life. He's got a good plan for you. But most times we by ourselves, we neglect the plan of God for us and we switch to the devil's plans. Why? Because the devil is the one controlling you. But Jesus wants to come into your life and be your father. He wants to be your shop. He wants to be your guide. God is the one that has turned my life around. I'm telling you that. If not for God, I will not be here in the UK. If not for God, I will not be a uh, <laughs> Jesus. Who know me? Who born me? I am a citizen. I'm an Irish citizen. I lived in Dublin. I still have a home in Dublin. My husband is still in Dublin. He comes though. I'm still in the UK. I only relocated to UK recently. I hold, I am an Irish passport holder. Who born me? Who know me? All my children have, my whole family, we have foreign passports. Who knows me? Who know me? Who born me? It is only the, God, the Lord, it is only the God that can change your story. 
He's when I was growing up, who the who, who born me? From where? My mother was the only breadwinner of the house, in all honesty. My mother was a trader. I started trading with my mom when I was in primary school. Before I have had my own fair share of suffering. I suffered. Don't look at this face and say, Oh, she's beautiful, she's this. So I've been through a lot in my life. Before I go to school in the morning while I was in primary school, I will first go to the market to go and shade. To go and my mother's shop, go and open it. I will sell. And I'm always late to school. I will be flogged when I get to school in primary school. The next day I will repeat the same thing. Because I have to help that woman. Because she's a hard-working mom. I have a very... You see today, that seed. You see me. All seven of us. We don't have any lazy woman. All my brothers, there is no one that is lazy amongst us. None. Because the woman that brought us up is hard-working. She's hard-working. Hard-working. Today, as people, they know me. Hard, people that knows me. Me, business. Call me. Ah, I will answer you sharp, sharp. I like business. So, seriously. God has a plan for you and I. Don't let the devil rob you of God's plan. See what God says. I have a plan. I have this what he says to Jeremiah. We are the Jeremiahs of today. He has a perfect plan for your life. He says, I have a good plan for you. He wants plan to prosper you. See, God is the only one that prospered me. If not for God, I will not be anywhere near here at all. God is the only one that changed my testimony. He's the only one. How he did it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but he did. He can change your own story. He can change your own testimony. But he needs your heart. He needs you to surrender to him. He needs you to give everything that you are. Everything that you have to him. What is it that you are doing wrongly? God is saying, come unto me. He is saying, come, take my yoke upon you. He is saying, I love you. I love you. I want to have this relationship with you. I want to have this fellowship with you. I want you. I want you. I want to, I want to, I want to dine with you. I want to fellowship with you. I want to change things about you. He cannot do it if you don't let him. He cannot do it if you don't let him. You need to let him, brothers. You need to let him, sisters. Jesus cares about you. He cares about what you are going through. He cares about your situation. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. He cares. He knows it. He, even before you were born, he knows you. He knows you by name. He knows your name. There is that, that song that says, He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He knows your name. He knows your name. He cares. He loves you. He loves you. He truly does. You know, I don't know how many of us want to say, Father, I don't want to live my life like this anymore. I don't want to be the shepherd of my own life and destiny. I don't want to be going doing things the way I want to do it. I don't want to do things how it pleases me anymore. Today, Lord, I want to accept you into my life. I want to be a new man in Christ. I want to be a new woman in Christ. I want to test you, Lord. I want to experience you, Lord. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting. He loves you. He cares about you, brethren. He cares about you. He cares about you. He loves you. He wants you to live right. He wants you as the salt of the world, the salt of the earth, the salt in your community. He wants you to be the light that will shine in darkness. And darkness cannot stand that light. You are a light. You are a light. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. You are a light. God has made you a light. Oh, my Shandara Galagaba Sandaria. Heaven is real. There is a lie. Jesus is, Jesus. oh my Jesus. I want to hear your voices, voices of angels, every day, every single day. The Holy Spirit is there. He's been given to us. Hallelujah. Oh, my Father, Lord, we worship you. I want to say this prayer. For those of you that want to surrender your life to Christ, or you want to rededicate your life to Christ, see, many a time we backslide. You were, you were, you were a Christian before, and circumstances, situations, things that happened has caused you to turn your back on Christ. Jesus is still interested in you. He's been waiting for you. He says, behind I stand, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you hear him and listen, he will come in and dine with you. 
Remember what the Bible says, that he that puts his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit for his kingdom. I don't know the areas that you are looking back or you've looked back, but now you want to reconcile, you want to come back to him. You want to say, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I am sorry for turning away from you. Lord, I am sorry for looking back. Lord, I am sorry for not, for not being whom you have called and chosen me to be. Lord, I am sorry for going, doing things my own way. But Lord, today I want to do it your way. I want you to just lift up your heart. I want you to open up your mind to him and say, Father, I am sorry. If you are that one that was a Christian and you backslidden, God's mercy is available. Look, I gave my life to Christ when I was in secondary school. I backslidden for two years. In all honesty, I'm not going to deceive you. It happens. It happens. I backslided for two whole years because of the things that was happening around me. It was my husband that was even telling me, oh, I think last week he was telling me, oh, I remember back in the days when that time when you come to my house, you're always unhappy. You're always crying and complaining of what your stepdad was doing to you, all the pains I was going. I even forgot about it. That's the truth. I have forgotten about it. Because I have truly forgiven. I have forgotten about it. My husband was reminding me. I backslid that for two whole years. I am grateful to God that he loves me. That the trumpet did not sound. My, oh God, I do not want even to think about where I will be spending eternity. In 1991, the Lord found me again. I came back to Christ. I left the church for two years. I left the church. I was attending Christ Fellowship Center then at Ohoro. I stopped going to church. I stopped going to church. I left the church. I backslided for two years. I backslided. But God's mercy found me. 1991, the Lord reconciled me back to himself. And since then, I have not, I have not looked back. I have not looked back. And since 1991 coming now, the Lord has built my life. Since I reconciled my life to him, he changed my story to glory. He wiped my tears. He wiped my tears. He gave me testimony. He gave me beauty for my arches. I had a lot of arches. He gave me a very wonderful husband. He blessed me with three beautiful children. Look at me. I'm living abroad. Who knows me? I don't even know Lagos. Not to talk of airports. He settled my life. He can do the same for you. He's ready to do even more for you. But you have to connect with him. Since I reconnected with him in 1991 till today, I do not have regret. Yes, I've had trials. I have had temptations. I've had difficult moments. But his mercies have seen me through. His mercies has seen, has seen me through. People disappointed me. People backstabbed me. Even in the Christendom. Even in my faith. But I refused to be moved. Things happened that would have made me say, Oh, if this person can do this to me, well, what is the point of being a Christian? But I refused to be moved. I refused to be shaken. Because I know my Redeemer liveth. He that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. He that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. Jesus loves you. He wants to relate with you. He wants to encounter you. He wants to change your testimony. He wants to give you beauty for arches. And you can only, how can you go to a father you don't know? It's not possible. Let me say you as a person, as a, fa as a mother or a father walking on the street. And somebody just walks up to you to say, oh, give me this. That is with authority demanding that you do this for them. You will say, excuse me, do I know you? Do I know you? I don't know you. How can you come to me to do that for you? You to take the grace of God. You don't know who the person is. You wonder like, what? From where? How? I don't know you. That is how it is. You cannot go to the God that you don't know or that you don't have relationship with. You need to know him so that you can boldly come before him. You can boldly empty yourself, your heart before him. I want you to pray for those of you that want to reconcile with him for those of you that has backslidden i want you to lift up your hands now and begin to say lord i am sorry lord i am sorry my father my god i am sorry lord i come back to you lord i come back to you have mercy upon me have mercy upon me jesus father lord i am sorry for for, for falling by the wayside i am sorry lord for living this faith i am sorry lord for doing things negatively i am sorry lord for not listening to your voice anymore i am sorry my lord have mercy upon me 
Have mercy upon me, Jesus. Let your mercy locate me. Let your grace locate me, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to say, Lord, I reconcile to you. Lord, I re surrender, Lord. I surrender, Lord, to you. In totality, Jesus, I surrender to you. My God, I surrender to you. I surrender to you, Father. I surrender, Lord Jesus. Have mercy. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Father, I rededicate my life. Begin to pray this prayer. Lord, I rededicate my life to you. Lord, I rededicate my life to you, Lord. I am sorry, Father, for my past misdeeds. I am sorry, Lord, for going back to the world. I am sorry for taking pleasures in sin. Father, have mercy upon me. My God, have mercy upon me. Father, have mercy upon me. Reconcile me to yourself, oh God. Reconcile me to yourself, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I surrender, Lord. I give myself to you, Jesus. I give myself to you, Jesus. I give myself to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus and his peace. Mashandarigelegebosontoria. Oh, my Father, my Jesus, I'm going to pray for you now. For those of you that are reconciling yourself to Christ, I'm praying for you now. Lord, I commit your children into your hands. Lord, that we know that it is not your will that any of us should perish, that by which that but that we should come to repentance. Lord, I commit your children that are returning back to you, to you, Father. Lord, I ask that you will have mercy upon them, O God. Let your mercy have let your mercy, Lord, rest upon them, O God. In the name of Jesus, Father. Even as they are taking this decision, Lord, to come back to you. Lord, I pray that you will have your way in their lives, O God. Father, Lord, that you will reconnect them back to your suffer oh god let their lives be reconciled to you oh god almighty in the name of jesus christ i pray for your peace upon their lives i pray for your mercy and grace upon their lives oh god that from this day oh god father new things will begin to happen to them in the name of jesus christ father lord i pray that today we mark a new beginning in their lives oh god in the name of jesus Father, have mercy, Lord. Forgive them their trespasses against you, God. Wash them with your blood, Father. I cover them in your blood, oh God. I cover them, Lord, in your grace and mercy. In the name of Jesus. Even as your mercy and your grace continues and begins to locate them. Father, have your way in their lives, oh God. Take over their lives, oh God. Be their shepherd of their soul. Be the shepherd of their lives, Father. That this one's henceforth, oh God, will never go back to the world anymore. Just as you found me, Lord, in 1991 when I came back to you. Lord, today, let that same grace rest upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, my God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the next set of people. You that have not received Christ at all. And you want to accept him now as your Lord and your personal Savior. Wherever you are, distance is not a barrier to prayer. It doesn't matter. God is everywhere. He's right there with you. I want you to just lift up your hands before him. And say, Father, Lord, I come before you. I am a sinner in need of help. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. Lord, I come before your throne of mercy. And I say, Lord, be merciful unto me. Forgive me my trespasses against you, Lord. I open up my heart to you. And I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life, O oh God. Be my God and my Savior. Thank you, Jehovah God, for turning my life around. I am born again. Now I am a child of God. Thank you for living in me, O oh God. Thank you for saving my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for you now. My Father, my God, I begin to stretch my hands towards your people that have just received you as your Lord and their personal Savior. Father, Lord, that this will mark a new beginning in their lives. Father, that this will make a change in their lives. Father, that from this day henceforth, O oh God, they will hate sin with passion. Lord, they will hate sin. Let this passion, Lord, to hate sin envelop them, O oh God. 
in the name of Jesus, that from this day henceforth they will sin no more, that your lights will begin to rest upon them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let today mark a change in their lives. Let today be a new day, a new dawn, a new era in their lives in the name of Jesus. From this day henceforth, I begin to decree upon you that you will never be the same in the name of Jesus. I begin to release the power of God upon your life. I begin to release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father God, I begin to release your ministry angels right now. Every angel assigned to this ministry, every angel assigned to me, every angel assigned to the children of God, my Lord, coupled with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I release them right now, that they begin to go forth to God, to different locations, and begin to touch their lives, and begin to turn them around for good, in the name of Jesus Christ of God, my I release the fire of God upon you. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. That as many today that are trusting for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Release and be re released. I release to you now in the name of Jesus. And I say, Relieve it. Holy Ghost. Go do your work in them. Do your work in them. Do your work in them. Do your work in them, oh God. Do your work in them, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Ma Santoria. Rege baba baba shanda rege lege boyo. Ma sanda rege liba sanda riga baba baba. Yendo kaya ba sanda lege bo sanda ria. Ranto liga lege bo sanda riga baba 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 shanda rege lege bo sanda ria. Fire ba ledo go rega bo sanda ria. Holy Spirit, ma sanda riga lega ba. Do your work, do your thing in the life of God's people. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, begin to manifest your power. Holy Spirit, begin to manifest your glory. Holy Spirit, begin to manifest your anointing. I release the fire of God upon your life, wherever you are. Receive the touch of God. Receive the fire of God. And receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Jesus, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name, Jesus. Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. Ha. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, my shanda rega lega ba 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 Oh hallelujah hallelujah masando regeli kelege boshanda rega ba 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 hallelujah 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 jesus you deserve all the glory father you deserve all the praises my god you deserve all the worship, oh God. You deserve all adoration, my God. You deserve it, oh God. We give it to you, Jesus. Ah. Oh, we are waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. With our hands lifted high. Come on, worship him, worship him. Worship him before we go now. Worship him, hallelujah. And it's you, oh God. We are done singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you, Holy Spirit. We are waiting for you with our hands lifted up. Lifted up. Lifted up. Lifted high in praise. Oh Jesus, in praise to your name, in praise to your God, in praise of God is you we adore. Oh Jesus, you are the one we adore. We sing it hallelujah. Oh 
Oh, we sing in hallelujah. Oh, we sing in hallelujah, Jesus. Mas contori Oh, we are waiting for you, Jesus. We are waiting for that touch. Oh, with our hands lifted up, oh God, lift up your hands wherever you are. Oh, lift up your hands wherever you are. With our hands lifted high, oh God, we're waiting here for you, Jesus. Oh, begin to touch us, begin to touch us. It is you we adore. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Thank you for your presence, O 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 oh God. Mare do regeli gelega bos sandaria. Ma shanda regeli gelega bos santo kaya baba. Oh Jesus, we just give you the praise. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We give you the worship. Blessed be your name, Jesus. All the glory be to you, my King. All the honor, the adoration be to you, my Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, people of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. For joining. May God bless you. May God continue to bless you. And may he bless you even more. If you joined halfway, please go back. And watch this video key into everything. I know that the Lord is with you. The Lord is here. He's on this platform. And please share, share this video. Be a blessing to others. Be a blessing to others by sharing. Because you might, whenever you share a godly video, a godly video, you are blessing a life. You might be saving a soul even. You don't know some people have reached the end of the road where they've given up. But sending a video that will encourage them goes a long way. It goes a long way. A lot of people are wearing their shoes. They know where it hurts. You don't know. But you just do what the Lord would want us to do by spreading the gospel. I pray that the Lord will bless you. I pray that the Lord will cause his face to shine upon you. I pray that he will fulfill all his plans. Like he said, I have a plan for you. He has a good plan to give you a future. To give you a hope. And I pray for you that God's plan for your life shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare upon you that the plots of the wicked will not travel in your life. In the name of Jesus. And for those of you that have accepted him into your life today as your Lord and personal Savior, the Lord of hosts will guide you. And please look for a Bible-believing church around you and begin to attend. If you don't have a Bible, go get one. If you can't get one immediately on your phone, you can download Actually, download Bible and begin to read. Start from the New Testament. Read. Get to read about Jesus and the things that he do. Your life will never be the same again. And please, if you are one of those, you need further counseling or advice, inbox me. I promise I will answer you by his grace. I will answer you. Inbox me. I'm sorry for those of you that you've been un inboxing me, but you are not, I don't know. When you inbox me, don't just hear hey, beautiful, sweetie, this, that, that, that. No. When you inbox me for prayer, tell me, just inbox, tell me, you need prayer for this, you need encouragement in this, you need this in this, so I can respond. I have a lot of messages, a lot of messages on my inbox. So if you are not specific, I may not know how to respond to you quickly, you know. So just be specific when you message me and say, oh, please, I need prayers. Oh, please, I need counseling. Oh, please, I need advice. I will respond immediately because it will come like, I need this, I need that, okay? God bless you. God bless you. Always remember today says, be a light in your generation. Be a light in your community. Be a light in your church. Be a salt. Be a taste enhancer. Bless people around you. Don't be a, don't be, don't be a thorn. Don't be a curse. Be a blessing. May the Lord bless you. And may he continually cause his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. Oh, before I go... <clears throat> I just want to announce, I've already posted it, maybe most of you have seen it. We are having a three days fasting and prayer here online, yes, online. We are going to have it on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of this month. It is called, it is called Discovery, Discover to Recover. 
I don't know what you believed God for from the beginning of this year that did not that you still did not encounter that you've not seen. I don't know what you are believing God for. The year is coming to an end. This is the time people make resolutions. This is the time people set goals. I don't know what your goals are for next year, but you need to you need to discover them now so that you will recover them and when the lord have done it you will know that this is the lord and by the grace of god i'm trying to get i'm going to try to get some uh, pastors to come and bless us oh <laughs> by the grace of god so it's not just gonna be like normal by his grace i'm just trusting god to guide us and lead us if i can if i'm able to get hold of some of my pastors i'm going to call on them so they'll come and bless us with that same topic and uh, we'll be praying so we're going to be starting the prayer starts uh, the fasting will start six o'clock in the morning and it's going to end six in the evening six to six but some of you are inboxing me that you cannot do six to six i don't know your strengths you know uh, back in the days we were brought up rugged we grew up rugged though not this uh Ajabo christian we are practicing these days back in the days we will go to we'll do seven days dry fast i've done seven days dry fast i don't know if i can do that again now Back in the days, you know, then we have to carry our mattress to church. Seven days, no food, no water. See, some people started drinking from the third day, but I couldn't. But three days fasting, dry. Uh, that one, I can even do it in my living room. Three days dry. Back in the days, there was a time the devil attacked me. I couldn't fast dry. But by the grace of God, everything is restored. So, look, we are not um, angels. We are humans. We have blood. We have, you know... It's not, it's, I'm very transparent. I don't want to come here and be deceiving you. Yeah. No way. We are human. We are walking towards perfection. We are perfect in Christ Jesus. Okay? So do what works for you. There are different types of fasting. There is the Daniel fast where you can eat some certain things. If you feel you, bring, you prefer to do the fruit fast, please, this is a freestyle fast, but make sure you fast and you connect. You need to hear from God. Concerning your 2018. 2017 is almost gone. Nothing happened. Something must happen in 2018. And we still have time. 2017 is not over yet. So God can still encounter you. We have the Daniel fast. We have the fruit fast. We have the water fast. If you want to fast with water, it's from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening. With whatever you want to do. But make sure you fast. Make sure you fast. And please, fast according to your strength. I know some of you are new to fasting. I'm not going to push you. So fast according to your strength, okay? Fast according to your strength. But connect to the prayers. Because 6 a.m. in the morning when the fasting is starting, British time, we're going to come online. We're going to come online 6 in the morning. We will pray. And we will start. And then from that 6 in the morning, we will announce when we are coming online again during the day. We might be coming online up to three times in the day or twice two or three times in the day each day for those three days don't miss it don't miss it and even if you miss it because some of us are working i understand that even if you miss it make sure you fast and when you finish work and you are free for that day key into those prayers in the morning all the prayers for that day make sure you key yourself into it and be a partaker your 2018 must be different there must be a change a supernatural turnaround the lord will perfect every single thing that concerns you in the name of jesus i love you blessed people of god i love you but remember that jesus loves you even more jesus loves you even more god bless you have a wonderful afternoon morning evening wherever your location is God bless you again and again and again. Bye-bye. Bye. Please don't forget to share. Share, share, and keep sharing. May the Lord bless you as we share in Jesus' name. Amen.